happy Palm Sunday. Happy day to, to just celebrate a king. And I want to give you some tools of how to live lives of celebration in the midst of this. And I, and I kind of want to paint for the picture for you the picture of what, what's going down. Oh, you're so right. You're so right. Sorry, I'm so excited about the kids. I totally forgot what was next. Do you mind if I change my mind and, and, and you come back up after I do this? Because I'm kind of in the mood. Is that okay? Of course. Okay. I legit told her we're going to do communion right after the kids' message. And then I told all of you not. And then, I, forgive me. I get excited sometimes. Um, I should get excited sometimes, right? Come on. All right. All right. Palm Sunday is an interesting day. I don't know when the last time was that you opened up your, script, your scriptures and you really looked at the story, but it's a really, it's a really weird story to me, right? Because they're coming into Jerusalem. He's been telling the disciples, "Hey, I'm going to get turned over, and I'm going to, I'm going to die, and on the third day, I'm going to raise." And they're like, "Ah!" And they're just like the, the, those conversations have been happening. And they're going to Jerusalem, and, and there's this sense of everything's building. And as they come to town, Jesus grabs a couple guys and he's like, hey, uh, guys, go on into the village and you're going to find a donkey with, a, with its colt. Go ahead and untie them and bring them here. Guys, that's theft, right? Like, isn't it? And, and they, they realize, it's like, uh, what, what if somebody isn't comfortable with strangers taking their donkeys. Like, what, what if they're like, what are you doing? What do we say? And Jesus is like, just tell them the Lord has need of it. All right. Put that in modern terms. Yeah. The donkey is the F-150 of that world. Right? It's, it's the work truck. It's how you, you, you pull carts and you haul goods and, 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 and like... How much does a truck cost these days? This is a colt. A brand new donkey. With lots of years of service in front of it. How much does a new truck cost? They rolled up and are like, hey, uh, we're just, we're just going to take the donkeys, all right? And they're like, why? Uh, the Lord has need of it. All right. I look at that and uh, that piece alone... I could sit there and just go, how did that? Jesus, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. And they go get it, and they bring, they bring it to Jesus, and some people take their, their cloaks off, and they put it on to make a saddle. Right? And Jesus gets on, I don't know if you've all ever seen a man on a donkey. It doesn't proportion right. Right? Like, man on a horse... There's the, the, the silhouette, like, that makes the cover of a good fiction book, right? Man on a horse. Man on a donkey looks weird, frankly. Just looks weird because their legs are sticking out too far and they're, like, too tall for where the donkey's head is. It just looks weird. And then I'm like, okay, was he on the donkey or the colt of the donkey? Because if the colt's never been written, that could get lively real fast. I'm just I'm thinking this through and I'm like, what a bizarre day. And none of that is the point of the story. Because Jesus is just dropping miracles like it's no big deal. Because his resources are that abundant. And nobody said amen, and I'm curious about you. I am. Because his resources are that abundant, and they're available to us, right? Amen. Yeah. He's just dropping, dropping miracles. It's fun. And as they're riding in, this red carpet thing happens. People are putting their cloaks down. People are getting palm branches. People are shouting scripture. Let's take a look at it. I've done most of this story today uh, from Matthew, uh, though it is in, in pieces. It's in, it's in all the Gospels. Uh, but I've, I've stayed in one today. So we'll be in Matthew most of, most of the morning. So Matthew 21. Uh, I'm going to read to you 6, six through 11. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. 
And most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees, spread them on the road. And the crowds went before him, and, 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 the, and those that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. This becomes this massive parade, this massive entourage of celebration and singing and quoting scripture and waving palms, and they're coming in, and it's, it's a big enough deal that the city's like, what's going on? What is it? Who's the famous person, right? They, they recognize what's going on uh, from far enough distance. They don't know who this is. Now it's just Jesus. But I want to look at the crowd. The crowd's an interesting story in Jesus' day. I want to look at the crowd. Because sometimes we're in the crowd, and sometimes we observe the crowd, and sometimes we don't want to be in the crowd. And, and there's a crowd in the story, and he throws up, shows up through the story. Right? The, crowd, the crowd's been a part of Jesus' ministry the whole time. One day they're hungry, so he feeds thousands and thousands of people with some loaves and some fishes. Right? There's, there's times when, when the crowd is gathered so thickly that like people are getting healed and he's teaching and you show up with your paralyzed friend and you've got to dig a hole through the roof to get to him because the crowd is so thick. And at some point, Jesus needs to start teaching the disciples a little more intentionally about the fact that he's going to die and, ra- and, and rise again. And so he goes away from the crowd so he can get a, a word in edgewise. But as they come back, the crowd's there again. And as I look at Palm Sunday, it sure looks like the crowd gets it right. Which is weird for the crowd. Because a week from now, they're going to get it dead wrong. And they're going to request that a murderer named Barabbas is released instead of him. And it is the chantings of the crowd that motivates that moment. (laughs) And the crowd is going to be stirred up to chant crucify him just a week from now. Crowds are scary. We often call them mobs. Mobs do murder. Sure, in modern day, I mean they cancel. I don't mean murder, murder. They just mean you can't get a job ever again. Right, but like mobs do real murder. We call them lynchings because it happened first in Lynchburg. But it's a mob doing murder. And it's a part of the story of our country. Crowds are, crowds are dangerous. You whip crowds up into a fervor, they're scary. Because they'll do stuff. They'll do terrible, terrible stuff. And the religious leaders knew it. The religious leaders knew it. ahead to uh, Matthew 21, verse 46. Matthew 21, verse 46. Just a little further on the story. The religious leaders knew that mobs were dangerous. They knew crowds were dangerous. And they just watched the crowd be pretty excited about Jesus walking into town. So they assumed the crowd was going to go that direction. And they were a little nervous about it. They wanted to arrest Jesus. They really, really wanted to arrest Jesus. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds. Because the crowds held that he was a prophet. At some point, they question Jesus, and, and, and Jesus kind of gives them this thing. He says, okay, I'll answer your question if you'll answer mine. Was John's baptism from God, or was it just for man? And they're like, okay, if we say from God, then he's going to be like, then why didn't you follow it? Why didn't you obey? Why didn't you play along? Because they didn't. Okay, that's not a good answer. That makes us look bad. But if we say it's just for man, they feared the crowd. Because the crowd had held him to be a prophet. Right? There's this fear of the crowd. And, and sometimes it's a big deal. Like ultimately, this plays out in Good Friday, right? Ultimately, Jesus' death plays into the fickleness of the crowd. 
But sometimes crowd, crowds, oh my gosh, crowds, they give us Bodie McBoat face. Do y'all remember this story? 2015 or 16? No? All right, every kid in the room, take a look at this picture of Bodie McBoatface. All right, so once upon a time, uh, a British research ship to do oceanic research uh, was built, and they allowed the internet to vote on its name. Do y'all feel the tension there? They were hoping to name it the Sir David Attenborough because I enjoy watching his nature documentaries as well. But Bodie McBoatface got three times the internet votes to the Sir David Attenborough. And I look at this and I go, like, this is why I'm nervous about crowds. Because there's somebody who worked hard to get their PhD. It's hard work, isn't it, Rebecca? Yeah. Right? They worked hard to get their PhD. They are excellent in some manner of oceanic research, and they're assigned to that ship, and they want to tell their family, I'm so excited, I'm going to go get on the boat and do research. Oh, wow, that's so cool. Is it a big boat? Yeah, it's a big ship. we got submersibles on it. What's the name of your ship? <laughs> Mobs are dangerous. <laughs> Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> Update on Bodie McBoatface. They renamed the ship the Sir David Attenborough and named one of the submersibles Bodie McBoatface <laughs> because the shame was too great. The shame was too great. <laughs> I think our modern world is just as risky a place for the mob as it was in Jesus' day. And maybe more so. Because one video goes viral. And there is no grace for you. And there is no recovery. Have you watched this play out? I don't know how that one sea turtle got a straw up its nose. But paper straws are a thing now. And I feel like it's actually not common for turtles to get straws up their nose. Like, I just don't even think that's normal. But it spread and it changed policy and states passed laws. Y'all with me? Oh, look at that. That's really? Like, really? Because I look at the pictures of the plastic in the ocean and it's not the straws that are the problem. It's the big floaty things. Y'all with me? Like, I look at it and I'm like, oh my God. We are so easily whipped into a mob. And, and, and we go do things that are not. What, what thinking person does that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, kids that have reached middle school or high school, did you, or did you get to read To Kill a Mockingbird? Yes, and I see a few nods. Okay. There's a mob story in To Kill a Mockingbird. At some point... Uh, Tom Robbins is in jail, and a group shows up to the jail. And we're supposed to understand that this is a lynching in process as we read the book. They're going to drag this guy out and kill him. And Atticus, the lawyer, is sitting on the porch. Very vulnerable right now. And he calls people out by name. And he turns the mobs into individuals. And the individuals think better at the moment, and it disperses. And it's an amazing thing. I've told you many times, our, our, our fight is not against flesh and blood. Right? The individuals are still humans who have the ability to think. But in the mob, we become very fickle. Do you know this word, fickle? Parents, I know you do. I do, because... I, too, have children, and I've observed fickle over the years. Um, I know, I just did a joke on the kids, on Kids Sunday in front of them, and none of them know. It's great. It's so, did you catch it? Yeah, you got it. Okay, got it. Take a look at the definition of fickle. 
Next slide. Yeah. Likely to change frequently without good reason. Mobs are fickle. Mobs are fickle. They, they'll jump on something, not really think it through, and act in a way that is uh, very unchristian. And I don't know if you realize that we're all vulnerable to being part of the mob, but we are. There's a zeal in the mob. It's fun. It's fun to be a part of the group, and we're all in this together, and we're chanting together. And then sometimes I look back and I go, yeah, that was not a good choice. I, I look at, at the risk. The risk of, 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 a, of a guy or a gal with some riz. Is that the right word? Is that the right word, Ellie? Yeah? For you old people, riz is charisma, right? It's somebody who's got that ability to incite the mob to come join them, right? It's the crowd leader. And I look at our world and I look at how easily... Somebody can stand up with a little charisma. And they can get lots of crowds to follow them anywhere. And I look at it and I go, what thinking sane person would want to be on that team? And, and that's the thing. See, crowds are fickle. There's not good reason. It's good energy. Right? Like I look at I look at how many people on Palm Sunday as Jesus is rolling into town really knew what was going on and how many people just joined in the crowd because it was a fun festive moment. I don't know. I bet it's a few. And how many people really understood the weight of the decision on Good Friday to, to ask for the release of Barabbas? the convicted murderer instead of the release of Jesus, right? How many people really understood the import of that moment and how many people just were chanting Barabbas with the crowd? I think there's times when we don't really understand kind of where we are in the mix and then we look back and we go, ooh. I feel certain that there are a bunch of, uh, a bunch of Germans who realized they, they, they went along with the crowd and they missed their opportunity to oppose Hitler. I wonder. So in this modern day where all it takes is, is some, some viral hashtag to get you on board with Bodie McBoatface, how do you resist the power of the crowd? How do you know up front if it's going to be Palm Sunday crowd or Good Friday crowd? Can I recommend that we need to be really good at this book? It is so easy to float along with popular opinion, and it is so good to have something to anchor you to truth. It is so easy to get whisked along with popular opinion, and it is so necessary for us to be anchored to truth. When the Pharisees confronted Jesus, as, his, as people are shouting out, and they, they confront him, they're like, why don't you hush them? Tell these people to be quiet. And he's like, the truth is that if they were quiet, the rocks themselves would be required to shout out. Because the king had come to town. There is truth that is bigger than popular opinion. There is truth that is bigger than the politics of the moment. Can I, can I, I don't, I think this is my spiritual gift of obvious. I don't think this is prophecy. I anticipate that we will see an increased crowd mentality between now and November in America. And I think that's just my spiritual gift of obvious. I don't think I'm prophesying. I think anybody could have successfully read that. Y'all with me? I think we're going to see an increase of mob mentality between now and November in America. And my guess is it's just not good for us. I want really good things for our country. I want people who aren't fickle, who think things through, and make policy that is wise. And that's harder than following somebody with charisma. 
much, much harder. I want good things for my country. Which means I need to know the truth really well, and I need to walk in it, and I need to stand for righteousness. And at times, I catechist, I need to oppose the crowd, and I need to call individuals out, and I need to say, hey, there's a bigger truth going on here. Would you stand with me in righteousness instead of in popular opinion? And to do that, I have to go ahead and take up my cross. I have to go ahead and take up my cancel and follow Jesus. I've got to be willing to risk that the crowd will turn on me if I'm going to stand for what is good in our world. And I look at Atticus and I realize in a hundred other stories across the South and honestly in the North as well, mobs didn't get stopped by the guy who tried to stand in the way. That person just got sucked in with it. Church, we need to be a people who know the truth and aren't swayed by popular opinion away from the truth. And the scriptures are the key to that. We've got to know the truth. We've also got to go ahead and just embrace the death of the moment. And be ready to stand when it's time. When Jesus looked at people and said, take up your cross, literally they heard, take up your means of public execution. Take up your cross, your means of dying, and follow me. Come on, we all got to die, let's go. I almost went Oprah on you. You get to die. You get to die. Right? I almost like, I almost like, let's go, people. There's truth to stand for that's bigger than what is moving. There, there is self indulgence to resist that is far beyond your own preference. We need to be people of righteousness. And we're not going to get that scrolling through Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. What's the next one? What's the next one? A couple of you MySpace users. I'm with you. I'm not in your eight frames, though, am I? Because we're not going to get there. But the algorithm's designed to whip up a mob. Hear me out. The algorithm is designed to whip up a mob. Y'all with me? It, it knows that we have a vulnerability to that, and we need to be bigger than that. Amen. Resist the mob between now and November. Do, make a choice out of good reason. By all means, participate in the story. By all means, vote. I, I'm not trying. Don't get out of the fight. Get into it, but get into it with skill. Because there's work to be done. Our country needs us. Yes. And for you internationals, your countries need you. So like, get your training, get your skills, and go bless your country. We'll be glad to send you out. Tell us when so we can pray for you. Like, I, like we've got work to do in this world. Amen. Come on. And it's not following the crowd. Because crowds are fickle. And crowds do evil things. Sometimes they get it right. Happy Palm Sunday. Sometimes they get it right. And sometimes it's good Friday. Right? 